What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel another video. Today we are going to be working with more natural colors. Continuing the series of this geode, I'm really trying to go for a more natural look, trying to get it to look more realistic. So let's get down here and talk about the colors we're using. All right. So in this one, we're using a lot of neutrals, grays, a bunch of whites, pearlescence, metallics, and a very stark black. So I want to try to re I keep trying to get closer and closer to a very realistic look for a geode. And I am happy with the results for the most part, but I think we can do better. So I'm gonna try to do a couple different techniques this time. On top of the one we were doing, hoping to add a little bit of depth, maybe a little bit more dimension to it. I did my puddle already. All right, so how's everybody doing today? I hope you guys are doing amazing. Let me put this here so you can watch with me. But this is a very beautiful, this little piggy simplicity. Hey, it's a gorgeous color, you guys. I think it's gonna add a very nice layer to our colors here. And we have that unbleached titanium. So I feel like that's a very kind of natural stone color. Let me do it this way. I'm gonna try to add a little bit less of the metallics because I love the look of the metallics. The only thing is I'm finding a really hard time getting the consistency close to the actual acrylic paints. Still have yet to find a fix for that, but if you know the fix, go ahead in the comments and let me know. Because I am really trying to get this to be a pretty realistic look. That's why I'm starting to try to tend a little bit towards more natural tones. Maybe this could do the trick for me. We'll see. And then we're gonna do, you know what? A little tiny spot of actual black. As you can see, this black is super heavy, super dense. All right, so, well, first before that, I mean, but look at this cup already. Those colors, so gorgeous. I'm in love. All right, so let's start by getting our puddles on here. Can you guys see that shimmer sparkle? It is beautiful and it's uh, transparent, so the black, starkness in the background is coming straight through. You can see it, but you also have those waves of shimmer from when it was poured. It's freaking beautiful, you guys. All right, let's get this out around the edges. Yeah, I didn't think about moving the cup, you guys, but it's fine. All right, let's start our pour. Well, the black that was on the top already poured through. We have a really dark color band out on the outside of this. Now the colors are starting to lighten up. We're getting some of that beautiful pearlescent white coming out. All right, look at these colors though. Jeez. I love it, you guys. Let's 
trying to make use of all this black. Like I said, it's thicker, so these colors tend to want to overlap it. But I love how that band is in there, so I'm gonna try to do another band after. We do some of this. This is actually cloak paint. It's just a metallic, so it's much thicker. And it'll stand up a lot better. All right, so that glorious white, like a cream, pearl, glittery wonder. And we'll have this stark band of gray. Push those out. And let's see. Probably another band of this guy. And this color and that color play really well. Glorious, so glorious. All right, so let me take some of this dark and I'm just drizzling it over the top to kind of help it band across and create a little bit more contrast in these rings. I think it'll do just enough. watching them flow out. Beautiful. Well, I am getting better at stopping the stream. So to me, that's a win. All right, let's get some of this beautiful color going on. I'll make the color bands a little thinner because I am going to do yet a third ring in the middle here because I'm loving these colors very natural Ooh, careful buddy don't go running away mm. I love that color Take that all the way to the end of the cup. We got a little tiny bit of black here. And I do want a spot. It's not gonna do a whole heck of a lot, but it will be there. Take some of this dark paint again, drizzling it over the top, giving it that contrast. We got some bubbles had some bubbles. And that black is almost completely obscured. All right, and just like that, I'm gonna put a little dot in there. A 
Mm-hmm. Only thing I do wish I had was more black. I didn't mix any, so. We're gonna see if this offers any kind of different look. I mean, it can't possibly look totally strange because it is a color that is in the main composition of the pour to begin with. I am anticipating pouring a lot of that off. And here, we'll just, let's totally experiment, you guys. These are all colors that were in the pour and they are extra paints, because you know how I am. I always have extra, guys. All right, let's move this beauty back towards the center. Ooh, these colors, you guys, I don't even know what to say. All right. You know, big time experiment. Why not? You only live once. Let's see if this does anything different here. Big time experiment. <laughs> there we go. All right, well, let me move the cups that have paint left in them out of the way. There really isn't too many that have paint left in them. All right, you guys. I'm gonna torch this, pop these bubbles first. All right. And then we're ready for the spin. There we go, guys. Almost looks like it should be that way. Almost. Not quite, but almost. One more. A little bit harder. I want to try to get some of that beige off that corner. Maybe make some of these lines really irregular. There we go. Now that looks very natural. Yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, so I let this sit in the closet for 15 minutes and I let it drip over the sides and then I scraped it to stop the flow. Let it wait 15 more minutes, scraped the sides again, pulled it out of my drying area and put it back. It did shift slightly and I think that was because of the weight of the paint because I know my drying area is level. But at this point, it shouldn't shift anymore so I'm going to apply the glass to it and we're going to bring this baby to life because I'm in love with the, just the natural look of this one. It's very neutral, very metallic. It has a lot of the same characteristics of the actual stone. I'm very happy with this one, but I'm gonna probably speed through this for you because this process just takes so long. And I am excited to try to do this in a more resin-based style because that is, I believe, what is gonna be coming up next. If that is something that you're interested in, let me know in the comments below because I would love to hear from you. I typically don't use resin on a lot of pieces. I definitely don't create resin only pieces. And I feel like trying to take this geode to the next level and actually make it look more real, I would have to use a 
resin and some different materials to accomplish that. But yeah, let me know in the comments. I'm curious as to what, how you feel about that. You guys, I am absolutely blown away by this one. Just all the colors, the way they played together, the mica powders, everything about this one. Just, mmm, it's beautiful. So let's get down here and check this thing out together because I'm absolutely blown away. I feel like the natural colors of this one really kind of hit the mark as far as creating something a little bit more realistic. And that simplicity mica from this little piggy is just phenomenal in this pour. You can see all the beautiful shimmery goodness of that mica in it all at once. If you want to watch another video just like this, click the screen right now and I'll see you there.